Hi, I'm Dennis with The Garage Engineer. If you saw in our other video, we built a boat with using just two pieces of plywood. If you haven't seen it, go back and watch that build. But for this video, uh, we are going to test, uh, we've got a 1968 Evinrude 3 horsepower outboard motor. And I got it, the customer didn't know anything about it. He just said he got it in a deal with another motor and hasn't had time to work at it. So, I bought it. This is the first time just working on it. Let's get into the video. So here we are on the other side of the motor. And we go down here. And you see two screws. There we go. This one is the top. Uh, you check your oil level. Also is the vent. And then we got the other one down here that is the uh, drain. So what we're doing today is we just want to check to make sure to, or to see if there's anything in there um, so we can run some tests in the water and not worrying about burning anything up. So that's what we're going to do right now. Let's get the screw here. Let's see what we got in here. Yeah, it's not, it's brown, it's full. Let's see if we can get closer there. So I don't know if you can see in there. Let's see if we can enhance. No enhancing, so that's probably a little too close. There you go. So now we'll just put the vent plug back in. Perfect. And we'll check for uh, compression next. So we are uh, brought you back on the other side of the motor. We're going to take off the case so we can get to the uh, spark plug. And I think we're going to do the uh, check for ignition first, just to see if we make sure we're getting spark. This is the sh fuel shut off. We gotta turn that a little bit to get it off. And turn it on there. And there you have it. The case should come off. We gotta pull the choke knob off right here. Now I'll bring it around. We got the choke. Gotta get that off first. It's not gonna come off until we do. Get a screwdriver. Nice. There you go. And that should just split right off there. Now it looks like someone's been in here before. This is moved. It's leaking. I think somebody looked at it and didn't want to fool with it anymore. So what we'll do, I'll turn you around and we'll get to the spark plug here. Alright, so we'll take this one out first. This is the lower one. And this is a 21 millimeter deep socket. It doesn't look too bad. Let's see here. Alright, here we go. I can't see anything. You seeing anything? Alright, so if we're not getting a spark, let's go ahead and look at the points on here. And see what is going on. I don't think this has been used or been opened in a long time, so... Probably everything's all crusted over. All right. 
So this is what we got to work with now. Let's take maybe this top. These screws right here. If they're going to come off. Let's see. Yeah, not too bad. Well, it does have writings on here. Set points to point 0.02. So 20 thou. So we'll check that. Definitely. I guess we gotta get that bolt off too. There you go. That's 11 sixteenths. All right. So we're trying to get this nut off and try to give this a try with the impact wrench. So I think we're gonna get the gas tank off, and to do that, we are going to have to uh, remove the bolts that are right here. There's four of them: one here and one farther up there. So I'm gonna remove that, and then we'll get a better view of the flywheel. Ooh, they're different lengths, so the long ones go towards the, I guess, the front of the machine, and the short ones go in the back. So we gotta keep that. Keep that in mind. All right, I got that loose. All right, we got that loose, except for let's leave the light over here. I got the fuel line. That line looks pretty bad, so we're gonna have to uh, I'll probably change that out, and it's hard as a rock. So it looks like this has already been taken off once over here on this end. So, we'll, all right, let me get you set up. There you go. There's a little bit of fuel left in there. All right. So that will get this out. All right, well, I had to borrow a uh, harmonic balancer puller. The problem is the only screws, bolts that fit, are, I don't think they're the right thread. So I got them in there a little bit. We're going to see how that goes. Um, I hope it doesn't strip out the bolts, but we'll give it a try here. It pulled the screw out back here. It's just not getting a good purchase on the threads. All right, we're gonna try something else. All right, this is a new game plan. We've got new bolts, they're quarter twenties, three inch long. Put in a washer on there, and we are going to get this set up here. Okay, we've got the bolts in. We're going to do this by hand because I don't know. We might have to get them packed out. Let's see what, what happens here. Bending the washers. It's bending the bolts too. That's not good. Try just a little bit with the air compressor, not much. Whoa, there you go. Got it. Yeah, we, we have been hammering on that all day long, trying to get that off. All right, it's just like opening a present at Christmas. There you go. It looks pretty good. I do see a little grease that's been leaking in there. You got the two points.
We'll check everything out and see how the points look. Here, I'll let you take a look. So everything looks pretty good, not too corroded. Let's see if we can get you. Well, it's not focusing right now. There you go. There's the points. There's the other one. It's not too crody. Wire. They don't look too bad. We'll go through and take a look at things, see how it goes. So here we're at the coil, and it was covered in rust, so I'm just cleaning it a little bit to make sure it's getting good contact with the flywheel. Um, so we'll clean off both sides, and then we'll check the points uh, next. It should be at 20 thou, and, uh, but they look pretty good, so I'm not expecting them to be out, but we'll see. Yeah, it looks much better. Let's go get the other side now. You won't be able to see it, but it's just as corroded. Put the nut back on and we'll spin this thing around. Alright, we'll give that a few spins here. Alright, we set up our spark plug tester here. Um, and what we're going to do is, on the flywheel, it's got an emergency uh, uh, rope pull so you can put it if your rope breaks. So we're going to just do that, see if we can get a spark going on. So you watch there. Oh, awesome. We've got a spark. Okay, now this one, let's see here. I'm going to have to set you down. Can you see it right here? All right, we'll give it a tr try real quick. All right, here we go. No, I didn't see anything on that one. Let's make sure we got a good ground. Oh, there goes my light. Give that a try. Here you go. Nothing. So since the bottom cylinder isn't getting any spark, I think it's the ignition coil. So let's get back in there and we will, uh, let's test it to see if we need to order a new one. There you go. I think the last we left was uh, we were not getting a spark out of cylinder two, which is the bottom one. So I spent some time last night and went through everything to figure out, kind of pinpoint the problem. Um, and I want to show you the steps that I did to go through it, and then I'll tell you what's wrong with it. So let, let me get the flywheel off. All right, so let me get you a little closer here. So if you split this down the middle right here, you've got your two halves. You got cylinder one, cylinder two. Um, you've got your ignition coil. The spark plug wire connects right here. There's a. I'll give you a closer look in just a minute. Um, and it goes to spark plug, to cylinder one. You got your condenser, which is connected to your ignition coil and your uh, points. Here's your point here. And here's the rocker arm, and here's uh, uh, the part where when it hits top dead center, it opens it up. So as this go spins around, it opens each side here, and then the, you got the revert, the opposite on the cel other cylinder here. So I'll show you how to test with a multimeter if your ignition coil is good or not. And then I don't, you test the uh, condenser with the uh, um, resistance but my multimeter doesn't do that so since we knew that cylinder one created sparking was good what I did was I switched the two uh, condensers and if it worked over here and not over here 
then uh, we knew it was the condenser. However, after switching it, condenser one, I mean, um, cylinder one still worked, but cylinder two didn't work. So we're, we're, we know that's good. Um, and then uh, I cleaned up the points. For some reason, this is a 51 year old motor, but it looks really clean in here. At least this is, unless this was really well kept or somebody came in here and changed it out. I'm not really sure. Uh, but definitely the wires are old um, because that leads us to the issue. So I cleaned up the points that worked. Um, we tested the ignition coil. Um, and, uh, and let me show you right now kind of what uh, how to test that. First, you want to check. So the, the ignition coil is made of wires that are round and around this way. It's called a primary winding, and then you got a secondary winding, and that's where it comes through. So when the magnetos, magneto is going around, it create that's where you're creating your spark. It goes from the inside coil to the outside coil to the secondary to the primary. So first you want to check to see if the primary coil, you're just checking to see if there's any breaks. So what you do, there's two wires. Um, don't have this disconnected. There's two wires, so all we do is set for continuity test, and our mine's there. And then two wires coming out, you just uh, touch the wires, and if you hear beeping, and, I mean, there's not much. See, you hear the beeping, that means the current is going through the wire, so it's not broken. Now you need to test to see if the resistance, uh, the ohms. Now these, uh, the range of them is 3,000 uh, ohms to 8,000 ohms is uh, means they're good. So what I'm going to do is chip on my multimeter change it to 20k the range some of our auto sensing you don't have to worry about it. this is a cheaper one so uh, you got to set it to yourself and then what you do is you tap you you uh, touch the primary wire and then the ignition where or where the uh, spark plug wire is coming in through there but for right now instead of since I don't have this out I want to uh, take to the end of the um, where the Spark plug attaches. I can do. I can touch that, and then touch the primary, and let, we're gonna let that set. And it's 3.3. .3, I think it was 3.35. The wire probably takes a little bit of resistance. So we're in the range of this being good. So I checked both of them, and they ended up being good. So which I probably should have checked was the wire first. Um, because just the rubber and everything will ended up being I think inside where the connection of the wire goes into the ignition coil it, it just didn't have a good connection I should have cut it and then reset it uh, but then I started so I ended up taking the wire out and I was playing with it on this end to check it and this end was corroded too so I pulled it off and cut cut the boot off pulled out a extra wire and wrapped it around our ignition coil and then I did some tests to um, see if it worked, and I was getting sparked. So it was, it was the wire. Uh, so that, then uh, to this morning I went to go get some more wire, and we're going to replace it now, and then we're going to put it back together and then test it to see if we, see if we got sparked. So that's where we stand right now, uh, and let's put it together. All right, so instead of just pulling the wire out and plugging the wire into the ignition coil, I'm going to go ahead and take it out and... Uh, because I want to test to make sure it seats properly. So we're going to take the ignition coil out. There's three screws. I don't know why they use flat and Phillips, but you got to have two screwdrivers to get this thing out. We got to get Phillips here. This is longer. All right. And then I, where the ignition coil meets the condenser and the points you unscrew it for uh, so it's the same thing as if I was undoing over here I'm just doing the same thing over here um, so we're going to disconnect that and I also like to take pictures of all this before we get started just in case um, which I've already done but it's always a good habit to take pictures. So if something messes up or you don't know where it goes back exactly, you'll know where it goes. All 
This is a long one. You gotta kind of work it up. All right. So while we've got this out, so I'm gonna show you here. So the ignition coil comes up, and you see how this is. There's the wire, spark plug wire, and here's the ignition coil. And it goes right inside there. I'm not sure if you can see that or not. Let's see if I can get a flashlight. You can see down in there. There you go. There's a pin that goes sticks into the middle of the core of the wire, and then uh, that's what attaches to this end of it. And there's your boot too. So, um, and I'm going to show you real quickly too. Once you take your core, uh, the ignition coil out, if you want to test, instead of if you don't have it out, then I do it the way I showed you before. But if you have your ignition coil out and want to see if it's good, um, the wire inside that I just showed you, you touch that and then you touch the ignition coil. Uh, you can't see. Let's try that. There you go. Oh, glare. There's a glare everywhere. What's that? There you go. So I'm touching inside where the spark plug wire goes and then the primary wire so it's going to reset to three point that well, was about the same so 3.3 one so that's still an acceptable range so I know that's good so this whole side's good it was the wire that was bad so let's go ahead and replace the wire this is special marine wire uh, Papillon ignition wire copper conducted um, and then that just pokes right inside I'm going to do that just to get the initial connection. Oh, get straight here. I just want to make sure it has a good connection. I'm pull it out, and you can see it, pen it penetrated the center core of the wire, so that pin's pretty straight. If it's off a little bit, it might hit the white insulation and you don't want to do that you want to hit the center core of the wire so I think we're good on there so now we're going to feed this through so I can go ahead and take this wire out gotta make sure we put the boot back on before we do that I might do a little bit of cleaning so let me pause you clean it and I'll come back okay so we're going to run the wire it needs to meet up to the front where the spark plug is basically the route is like this However, you need to get above this, so we got to go over the speed controller and then wrap it around and then measure it up front. So first I'm going to feed it through the speed controller here. Oh, came out, always comes out easier than it does going in, doesn't it? Okay. There you go. Get on the other side. All right, so we ran the wire around the outside here. There's a groove underneath the uh, here, and then we pulled the wire through the hole. I'm gonna put the boot on. Slide that down just for a second, and then we'll attach the ignition coil. So here's your where the spark plug ignition wire connects. We'll just attach that in. We'll attach, put the boot, slide the boot over, and then we'll pull the wire, ignition coil wire, back through. There you go. And then we're just doing the reverse order. Attach all the screws. Remember, the long one goes here. short ones go on the outside and don't forget the wire or the uh, bolt that goes to ignition coil the condenser the ignition coil attaches to the uh, points 
Alright. I just want to make sure the wires are sitting down there. And I'm going to adjust this wire here so it's not too bent. I'm putting strain on the ignition coil there. Perfect. Alright, so we just need to feed the extra line back through. And then make sure you leave enough slack for when uh, you have the motor turned. Okay, I brought you a little lower here so you can see a little better. So we ran our line around here, put it through the grommet, but you don't want to pull it tight because you want to make sure you have enough line so when the motor is twisted, and I'm not, I gotta work on that. Oh, I'm sorry, not that one. When the speed when the speed's twisted all the way to stop, you've got enough slack in your line. Uh so it doesn't uh pull out, pull on pull on the cable. So now we're gonna add the uh boot to the end of this. Alright. The boot's made up of two pieces. You got the spring where it attaches to the spark plug. This little sharp end pierces the wire and then you stick all that inside the boot like that and then, that, and then the spark plug attaches uh, to the spring on the inside. So I'm going to clean this up and then we'll, we'll put it together. Alright so I just took a little sandpaper cleaned off the, the oxidation on this piece so what we're going to do is we're going to pierce the middle of the wire like so so that it hits the core and then we're going to check it for continuity to make sure we got a good connection so I'll be doing the same test as before I'm going to touch one end to here and then we'll touch the primary wire to the ignition co ignition coil. I don't know if you can see. We should be getting 3.4 3400 ohms. So I'm test it here. There you go, 3.3. So that means we're getting a good connection all the way around with our new wire, so that's good. So now we're going to slide the boot on. And I'm going to put a little dielectric grease in there just to make it uh, slide in a little easier. So you got some dielectric grease. Even if we weren't doing um, this part of it, I would still stick some inside the boot to get it around that connection around here. Um, it's just keep one, it keeps the water out and two, it creates a little bit better connection between the spark plug and the wire. So keep that straight. So now all we do is we want it to point this way. So we got to get this to, if you can see, you got to squeeze it in there. just like so and then you should see on the other end of it, it you, I don't know if you can see ooh it's bright let's try that uh, I don't know if you can get a good there you go if you can see down in there you can see the spring uh, wire so let's let's test it again to make sure everything stayed kosher So, 20,000 ohms, we stick one probe in here, and then the other probe on the primary wire, and we're hoping for 3.44, or 3.33, you know, close enough. Alright, good deal. So everything's working now. So let's put the spark plug tester, or we got to put it back together again. And then we'll put the spark plug tester on there, so let's do that. 
and then we'll just see so add the spark plug tester on here connect the other end here and then I'll bring you out to show you how we put this back together real quick all right so we got everything set up now we just put the flywheel back on we want to make sure the uh, there's a key in here lines up with the key on the inside of the flywheel a little see the little notch there so we need to make sure they attach I like to test the spin make sure nothing's rubbing it's pretty smooth that's good so we got that on put the nut on and it's uh, three quarters And so for right now, we're not going to do it super tight. I'm just going to get it on. There you go. Let's make sure it spins. Good. All right. So my line is a little short, but we're going to do, I'm going to set up, this is an emergency. So if your line breaks, your pull string breaks, you can, uh, if you have just it, any type of cord, cord, you make a knot on the end of it. There's a little notch on top of the flywheel there. Oh, there you go, notch. In the top of the flywheel and you wrap it clockwise all right I'm gonna set you up on that but I'm also going to bring you out so you can see so we're looking at this to see if we get a spark that's what we're we're hoping for all right here we go there you go that's awesome make sure let's do it again to make sure there you go we'll do it one more time so we are getting spark our ignition works we're going to move on to the next step which I'll probably break the video off here it might be a little long but we're, the next thing we're going to do is um, put this in a tub of water so we can actually see if we can get it to fire up by uh, bypassing the carburetor and sticking some fuel in there just to see if we can get some spark going and to see if it'll actually start. So that should do it for the, testing the ignition of our outboard motor, uh, our Evan Rude. Uh, what we'll do next uh, in the next video is to test to see if how we have compression and uh, if it actually kicks up. So uh, stay tuned to the next video and we'll look at that.